Good afternoon. My name is Hulan Rojo. I'm a surgeon and a PhD in Knowledge in Philadelphia. I've had the very unfortunate privilege of being in this very room before a similar um, panel advocating for patient safety, for women's health, for medical ethics. Um, and I have to tell you that, that without a clear understanding of medical ethical principles, which there's very uh, scarce discussion of here, um, practice will be turning into unforgivable harm. At first, I want to remind every um, federal agent, federal officer here, that you are guardians of public health and of the agency that's charged with protecting every American life. You're not here to protect Bayer's interests or the gynecological community interests. You are here to protect the interests of the people, the public. It's very ironic to me that we're sitting back here after this presentation, and later um, sitting on that side of the FDA and the expert panel. Very ironic and surprising. Ladies and gentlemen, we've heard a lot about Shore. It's a nickel based oil, it's placed in the fallopian tube in otherwise young and healthy women. Okay? It's not designed, this device is not designed to cure an incurable disease. It's designed to irreversibly prevent pregnancy, and there is a lot of doubt as to whether or not it's effective here. Um, it's designed to create an inflammatory response in the mucosal surface, which is poorly understood and really was not part of the PMA process. The study of the basic immunology, I think if you tap Dr. Milner's expertise here, you'll find out that the study of um, the mucosal immune response in the nickel was never part of the original PMA process. This inflammatory process goes rogue, and what you're seeing here is a group of women, and I'm going to ask you folks, folks to stand up and remain standing as long as I'm done, so everyone sees you clearly. So it appears that Bayer here and the gynecological industry are having uh, us accept this concept that majority benefit is uh, justifies the political harm of minority subsets of people. And, you know, I ask you to consider what failed societies in the past have done that. Um, you know, we're talking about something that's avoidable. It's a medical device that's completely avoidable. And what I want to know from this panel is what percent harm are you going to accept? 0.1%, 1%, 5%, 10%? And how are you going to justify that? Preventable, avoidable device, avoidable harm to this minority subset of women. You know, we're at a crossroad here in, in, in American medicine. And in particular, in particular, it appears in women's health and at the Center for Device and Radiologic Health. Okay? Because it appears that the preservation of choice the preservation of convenience, the preservation of majority benefit, are overriding the sound principles of medical ethics, okay? And that's okay, as long as it's minority self lives. I ask you, is that acceptable? I ask industry, is that acceptable? I ask the expert panel, is that acceptable? I ask the FDA, is that acceptable? You see these folks who are standing up here? They can't even take their case to the court, because the Supreme Court of the United States has taken away their right to seek justice in the court system because this device is a PMA approved device. Thank you very much.